welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. The place for all things guitar and gear. Here are your hosts, Chris, Jesse, and Robert. Welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure, your fortnightly podcast for all things guitar and gear. I'm Chris, and with me as usual tonight is Jesse. Hello. And as usual, no Robert. <laughs> also I know we keep, usual. Yeah, I know. I know we keep saying we're going to update this intro. Um, we'll get around to it one of these days, faithful <laughs> listeners, we promise. So um, if you like what you hear, please click like, subscribe, uh, either iTunes, YouTube, uh, leave us some feedback. We'd love to uh, hear from you. And uh, we'd love to get some suggestions on the shows. We'd love to get some suggestions um, for topics, questions. At this point, just call us names. That'd be fine. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Just interact with us. Uh, Twitter, at SST Show. SST, six strings and things, right? SST Show. Please, please, please talk to us. All right. That sounds pathetic, doesn't it? I know. <laughs> it's like, are there crickets out there? What? <laughs> please, please, somebody, talk to us. All right. So this is a guitar podcast, not a, a loneliness podcast. So why don't Although we, sometimes uh, it's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> That is true. Um, you get used to it. You go to the woodshed. You get good. You you have no friends. It's kind of a <laughs> yeah. It's kind of a hobby, at least for me. That's kind of a. And so I'm somewhat introverted. I, I like to be by myself. And even though when you think guitar player, you think oh, playing with a band, you know, jamming or whatever. One of the things that really draws me to it is the fact that I can just be by myself in here and play guitar. That's true. You know, it's like me time. Yeah. And uh, so it's a, it's a real good hobby for that. Yeah. Although one might not think of that immediately because they might think, oh, well, you know, if you're a guitar player, you want to be in a band or you want to gig or whatever. And It kind of depends on how you want to do it. I mean, yeah. you know, there's a whole spectrum because uh, – I mean, like the really the awesome players, you know, certainly the guys who are um, the best at the field, whether it be rock, jazz, classical, whatever it might be. Um, those guys spend a considerable percentage of their lives practicing and, and being alone and whatever. Uh, there, then you have the three chord rock slash punk slash whatever bands that, uh, you know, it's a guitar player. Yes, but um, very different level that doesn't really take that much work to maintain and they could be in bands and going out and whatever getting girls i I hear some guys get into guitar for that yeah i Um, hear that happens no idea what that's about but yeah (laughs) (laughs) so uh why don't we uh go uh into what we've done this week and we can always come back uh to this topic if we want but our faithful listeners are expecting us to talk about our um, guitar. <laughs> how hard we practice. Yes. How we slave over a hot guitar amp. That's yeah, right. Yeah, so uh, a little bit more on the uh, just playing with Eric Johnson's uh, Cliffs of Dover. Um, Nothing Else Matters from Metallica. I think I revisited that from a few weeks ago. Nice. Um, a bit. Some more. Just some acoustic playing to get my uh, uh, fingers back into shape. I, I always say that, don't I? <laughs> Keep trying, trying to get the calluses where they really should be. They're actually coming along really nicely, which is good. Um, I spent a, a few hours on a, uh, a website that was pretty cool called Crack... No, I don't know what it's called, but if you Google in YouTube uh, Cracking the Code, this guy goes into very good detail, <laughs> really in-depth, and the free videos. He sells videos as well that are e- even more in-depth, but very in-depth on analyzing uh, how the really fast rock players like Van Halen, Malmsteen, and all the post-Malmsteen shred guys from the 80s and beyond, uh, how they pick, how they play their patterns. He even came up with this um, – high-speed camera mount for guitar that goes over the strings so that you can see in close-up and in high speed how the picking works. And he's a good player. I mean, he's got those licks, you know, from the 80s shred, which is when he came up. He's got that stuff down. Um, but I, So I spent hours like going over this, trying to follow along as best I could. But, I mean, it's not like I was woodshedding at the time. You know, I just kind of wanted to see where, where it was. And it was interesting. Um, in the in the end, it's kind of like, well, these guys kind of do things differently from each other. So the secret really is uh, find a way that feels comfortable and then do it like thousands of hours. <laughs> Muscle memory. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Muscle but, memory. but it's worth taking a look and seeing if it's something that you want to spend a few hours on. And, and 
if it really appeals to you, hey, go throw the guy some some cash because I mean he put some really good production quality into the animations and everything for this thing. So let's yeah, let's put that link in our show notes so that uh, we'll our, our description that way our uh, our listeners can uh, go check that out because that sounds pretty cool and I think I might have to go check that out at some point. This I'm not thing, much into the shred thing, but I'd love to see this camera mount and this view and all that. Yeah, some of it, some of it's a little cheesy. Like his acting when he was like repro- <laughs> uh, kind of playing himself in college, you know. And I, I think he colored his hair and all. <laughs> it's kind of like, all right, this is a little cheesy, but you get through it. <laughs> you, That's you, cool. you can skim through it forward, you know. <laughs> Uh, it's a cool element to it. It though. kind of is. I mean, I you know all the props in the world to this guy for doing this because man, what a project. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah, and what have you been doing? Uh, not as much as I'd like. Hey, you're on my level. <laughs> I know. I know. It's been a it, it's been a rough week for Chris and guitar, and I, and I think this rough trend is going to continue up until probably next weekend is what mm-hmm. I'm looking at. So. Yeah, so not a whole lot. I mean, I've picked up the instrument and strummed, you know, a few times just about every day, but no real practice. You sanity know. check. Yeah, sanity check. Uh, a little bit of, like, guilt check, you know, if, like, oh, I should do something today, you know, uh-huh. kind of thing. Uh, but I've got the uh, potential to do a lot because I recently um, got three new tab books um, that are really thick. So lots of good music. I've got one for Hendrix. I got the complete Clapton and I got mothership for, um, Led Zeppelin. So right up awesome. my alley of this sort of, you know, classic rock kind of stuff, uh, blues from Clapton and started by looking at, uh, Layla, the acoustic version of Layla, the solo, which I can never learn apparently. Um, and now I have the tab in front of me. I've been listening to the, the music video, whatever, uh, on YouTube, trying to follow along and, you know, get that down. I think I've got it all but the last three bars. Uh huh. But it's just committing this thing to memory. It's just not, it's just not sinking in. It's not, not a good fit for your brain cells. I, I, it's, maybe that's what, maybe that's what the universe is telling me. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, um, other than that, mostly just strumming. Um, playing a little bit of uh, Scuttle Button, oh, actually. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, I will never be able to play that at speed. Uh, I think it's, according to my Stevie Ray Vaughan book, and there's like a trend. I have a whole bunch of Strat books right now, Strat player books. Mm-hmm. But according to my book uh, tab for Stevie Ray Vaughan, Scuttle Button's around 160 beats per minute. Uh huh. And if you watch him play, it's like crazy. Oh, yeah. It's insane. There's this video of um, Stevie Ray Vaughan playing. I think it's in Tokyo. And he's playing this song like like it's nothing, Mm -hmm. right? Smoking a pipe. He's got this pipe hanging out of his mouth smoking. He's just playing Scuttlebutt. And it just blows my mind. Muscle memory. (laughs) Yeah, I know. And I know we talk – I know we we mentioned this last show. We talked about Stevie a lot on the show. But it's kind of one of those things I've been working on over Uh the last few months. So – it's just going to pop up. But if our listeners are tired of hearing about Stevie, they could suggest other topics. That's like, true. By contacting us on at SST show. So uh, we all have our favorites. I mean, I could wax poetic for like, you know, hours about like Vito Brada or Nuno Betancourt from Extreme or, you know, the metal heads that I mm-hmm. that I really like. But I don't I don't even pretend that I'll be able to play that stuff. <laughs> It's like, I can fudge a little, you know, but it's like, to get the speed with some of these guys, it's really rough. And really, Stevie with his better stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's- yeah. And but one of the things I have learned, though, is that I am a bigger Clapton fan than I realized. Yeah. Because I was going back through, and I keep a list on my iPad of all the songs I know how to play, either parts of or the whole thing through. Uh-huh. And I call it my repertoire playlist. Right. And every once in a while, I'll play it while I'm driving just so I can remind myself, you know, what these songs supposed to, what are these songs supposed to sound like and all that kind of stuff. But as I was going through that, I have a lot of Eric Clapton songs on uh-huh. that list. And so I'm like, okay, I didn't realize I was such a Clapton fan. It's an interesting thing. Yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, I'm was. i a John Denver fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's when I started. So, like, I learned a lot of his songs, you know. So sure. But, uh, yeah, Clapton's – it's interesting, too, because Clapton, um, maybe not the most technical from a modern standpoint just because, you know, it was back then, you know I mean? And he, he 
is still playing, obviously, and he's still is a good player and tasty. Um, but technically speaking, he's not really any hotter than he was a few decades ago. You know what I mean? Right. And so he, it's it's kind of of a different era. But yet when I listen to like I, I um you know well cocaine from the Snowhand uh, you know album, it's like um you know the two guitar solos going on at the same time. Mm-hmm. It's like, I don't think he composed it that way. I think he like played one and then just played the other off of it and sort of winged it. But it's just tasty, you know. Yeah. You hear him going back and forth, and it's like that's really cool. Yeah. So um, yeah, you know, he's awesome. Yeah. So good stuff. And then I'm looking forward to uh, breaking out the Jimi Hendrix book because I one of these days I want to finish off Purple Haze. <laughs> grow and, long, uh, grow longer fingers. <laughs> yeah. And. Uh, uh, all along the watchtower was something I started a few months back mm-hmm. and uh, never got around to finishing it. But you know, it's why I keep one of my guitars tuned down so that I can uh, always go back to that pretty easily. That's true. So yeah. So uh, in addition, uh, I thought I'd make a recommendation to our um, listeners. I've added something recently to my practice setup, which has been very helpful: a uh, Bluetooth speaker. Oh, sweet. You yeah. got to show this. <laughs> yeah. I don't really want to walk away from the camera and go <laughs> grab it. So uh, it's kind of bad for the, those that are watching the, the video. That would just be bad form. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, but yeah, it's a little Marshall looking amp Bluetooth speaker. Uh, it has two tweeters and a, I think a four inch sub speaker. Uh, I think I can't remember the size of the tweeters. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It's very convenient because I practice a lot with my iPad. And iPad yeah. speakers are just awful, you know, in terms of actually wanting to listen to music while you're trying to play guitar. They don't get loud. They're small. Um, they're good speakers for what they're meant for, but they're right. not meant for guitar practice, right? So um, anyhow, this has been invaluable because I can turn this up at a pretty good volume. I can play along with my amp at whatever volume I want to play to. I can still hear the music. If I want to play a YouTube video, I can play through that speaker instead of trying to keep up, you know, with the, my amp or turn my amp all the way off so I can listen to the video while trying to play along. Uh, it's been a real nice addition to my guitar setup. And, and it, uh, it says Marshall on it. <laughs> and it says Marshall on it, which is really cool. Uh, and in addition, you know, it, it pairs with my, my laptop. So if I want to, you know, slow music down or whatever, pop up VLC, slow the music down or get on the, um, uh, YouTube on, on the laptop, slow the song down, play it through that. And again, it's just, it's nice, clear quality sound that is made it helpful to, I don't know how I practiced without it before. Yeah. That's cool. You know, very, very useful for the way I do things. Um, and you should note that if you are using YouTube on an iPad, and I don't know about Android, but uh, the slowdown feature does not pop up on the mobile app. Yeah, I don't think it does on the Android either. Yeah. So, so you can, anyway. Like, save the video and then play it back in like VLC or something, but that gets really tedious. Yeah. Yeah. It's more effort than I want to put into yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to go and play. So, um, anyway, that's what I've been doing this week. Uh, I'm also still, uh, as we've been talking about you and I through email, thinking about the old project guitar thing. Yep. <laughs> and, yeah. I'm, I'm I want to rip something that. apart. I don't know what. I, do. I know. I, I know. That's the thing. I just want to tear something apart. And uh, I'm backing off, I think. Yeah, for now. Yeah, for now. Something will come up. Something, something will. Something will pop its head up on eBay or, you know, at yeah. a guitar center near you. <laughs> yeah. Well, there isn't one near me. That's the problem. You know, I keep an eye out on uh, what pops up locally. Our problem with where we live um, with Craigslist is that we live in this small town area, right? Mm-hmm. And so the Craigslist selection just isn't all that great. Right. But every once in a while, something weird pops up. Like there's this, there's been this Dusk Tiger that somebody wants to sell. He originally had it for $4,000. Now it's down to $2,000. And I haven't seen it re-advertised on Craigslist in a while or a local site. I Mm -hmm. doubt that he around here has sold that. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Well, you can always throw people offers. Yeah. You know, and just say, you know, lowball it and see what happens. Yeah, but I don't want that guitar. Yeah. Yeah. And there's also another, like a Moserite double neck for 5,000 right now. Ooh. 
Yeah. I say, like, yeah, it's just a tough market around here to sell something like that. Yeah. Wow. I don't know. Most rights are one of those things where it's kind of like, ah, I don't know. It'd be kind of cool to have one, but I wouldn't want to pay real money for it. <laughs> right. <laughs> you right. know? That's $5,000. Because it'd never be like my main guitar or anything. It's just kind of like an interesting flavor from the past sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I, apparently they're collectible though. I don't know. I haven't really looked. Yeah, I don't know. But I mean, $5,000 for a double neck guitar. I just, uh, yeah, I can't imagine myself playing a double neck guitar enough to warrant that. It would have to be like a Jimmy Page SG. <laughs> yeah. It would have to be something I could turn around and flip. Yeah. You know, and that would be, I don't know. But anyway, I, I guess we should, as a show topic, talk a little bit about the whole project guitar idea insofar as what I've learned so far. Uh, because I have been reading forums and maybe some of our listeners can contribute um, things that they might know. But I was looking originally at a Squire Affinity because I figured Strat single coils are easy to come by. True. Strats are easy to work on. True. True. And I could take the neck off, put another neck on it. I could do all kinds of crazy stuff, right? There's no glued in neck, nothing to even worry about. And so I was reading and reading about this. And I had mentioned this earlier to you um, in a conversation we had, I think it was Saturday, about how the body apparently is thinner. It's like 1.6 inches instead of 1.75. Mm-hmm. And so, as I, I, from a, apparently the a regular strats were around 1.75 inches. Either way, that means that if you wanted to replace the trem block, it wouldn't quite fit. No. At least if, if you want to get the cover on it, the block cover on it. Right. Which, Which who I, does that anyway? <laughs> I have wide on my strats. I think most of my trends, you know, have the, block, the back on them. <laughs> back off, yeah. I have mine. But my my fender, uh, it's, it's so screwed down so tight that it's not ever – you oh, know, right. Yeah, blocked. you have yours kind of yeah, blocked. I have it pretty much blocked. So anyway, I saw that. And, uh, so, and then people are, um, on these forums were saying, you know, maybe Squire Affinity is not necessarily the thing to go with. So maybe instead look for a uh, Made in Mexico Strat mm-hmm. as a better platform for modding. Right. Um, again, I uh, get the idea of the Strat because it's fairly easy to work on. Right. You know, bolt-on neck is a big plus because it could be something that, you know, eventually I'd want to put like a compound radius neck on or whatever, um, which is why I'm staying away from stuff that was like the set-in necks, glued-in necks or whatever. Well, definitely. They're not really project guitars. <laughs> I mean, um, so, yeah, bolt-on's good. Um, I would wonder about – here's the problem with the Strat is the pick guard. You have the pick guard with all those screws – and um, not that that's a problem. In fact, it, it can be a good thing as long as the screw positions are all like standard. And I'm not sure that they are. Like I know you couldn't take the Yamaha Pacifica pickguard and stick it on a Strat and expect all the screw holes to line up. Right. But you might be able to take any Squire versus any Fender versus any like aftermarket Warmoth or, or all parts or something designed for a Fender. And they might all be interchangeable. I'm not sure about that. Well, um, I think uh, – they all are except for the bullets. Okay. I think from what I've been reading, I think the neck pocket for the bullet is thinner right. than a standard um, fender. So you wouldn't be able to put any neck in that from what oh, I've I see. been reading. I have no direct experience with this though. This is all from forums. Yeah, and I was thinking – I was actually thinking more about the, the pick guard than yeah. the neck per se. But yeah, I mean those are both you know valid. The thing about a Strat, of course, is that pick guard is kind of a pain to deal with. You have to take everything off and then the strings are off and you flip the whole thing over. And, and I, I always thought that the um, just the regular mounting rings or however or the body mount with the springs um, without a pick guard, kind of the way Ibanez does their Strat knockoff type of things and, and a bunch of other copy companies do, um, is just easier to deal with. Of course, then you don't get the thing where it's like, well, if I wanted to just swap out a pick guard, boom, you could do that, that instantly. Right. You know, then have it be pre-wired or whatever. So, yeah, kind of six of one, half dozen of the other. But certainly the Strat is a good uh, platform for playing around. Well, it sounds to me um, like if you wanted to – all you were interested in was swapping out pickups, then the Ibanez might be the better route. Right. That's because true. I think we were talking about this before. I mean it might even been the last show where you don't have to uh, take the pickguard cover off because there's no pickguard. And you can slide the pickups yeah. underneath the strings a little bit easier. 
if one was worried about, you know, keeping the strings on the guitar. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's a good platform and there's a lot of parts out there. <laughs> so it's kind of. Yeah. It's my understanding that if you get the, um, affinity and higher that everything will fit. Okay. So including pick guards and all that. That's my understanding. Again, no direct experience here. And I haven't gone to a store and looked that closely at screw holes and those kinds of things. Right. Uh, and then you know, a couple of other folks were recommending the Squire standard um, Stratocaster mm-hmm. as a modding platform. But then immediately after people were commenting that, you know what, that's such a nice guitar. You probably won't want to take it apart. Yeah. Well, and, that, and that's the point where you kind of have good, you know, at least usable hardware. Yep. They're probably cheap out on, the, on like the pots, that kind of thing, which are easy enough to replace. But I wouldn't consider that necessarily a project thing. Right. Um, but the Duncan design pickups are generally considered very good. And uh, so, yeah. So, is there a, a Squire that's above the Affinity that is not – doesn't have the Duncan pickups where – if you wanted to change the pickups to something, you knew you were going to do that, but you wanted that level of uh, kind of hardware. Uh, it's the classic vibe in okay. that slot. I think I it can't is. remember. I think it might be. The I problem with that classic. is then you get like the twenty-one fret neck. I think, yeah, which is, I think you're right. I'm not a fan of. So I mean, you know, that is the classic. So I mean, if that's what right. you want, then that's cool. I'm just right. like, why not put the twenty-second fret there? You have the space. Yeah, yeah, I know. Except I don't. I can't. I don't think I've ever, other than playing scales, mm-hmm. I'm not sure if I've ever played that high. Oh, I do that all the time. So that's the note that you bend if you're in E, and you're in uh-huh. E a lot in metal, you know, your old priest tunes or whatever, and that's the note you bend to get to that high E. So uh, okay. See, I'm not playing that style of music very often, so uh, it's yeah. pretty rare that I'm up there that high up. I mean, yeah. I'm in I'm in fancy land if I'm around the 17th fret. Oh, yeah, gotcha. Stuff that I play, you know. <laughs> yes, and there's ways around it, you know. Yeah. You, so you adjust your trim to not to, to be floating, and then you just pull up on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's another way to go, yeah, go around that. So, yeah. So, anyway, I've, I've had this project idea in my mind space. You know, another option would be just to get a kit. Mm-hmm. But the problem with that is I'm not confident that I could put a kit together and it would play as well as something factory made. Well, there are kits that are kind of designed that way, but it's just a question of, you know, do I want to spend that much money? <laughs> right. <laughs> and well, do I want to have their, basically their guitar when I'm done? Right. Exactly like that. Right. And, and I mean, that's not a comment on the quality of the kit. It's a comment on the quality of my wood worksmanship. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them are already kind of finished. I mean, I know Carvin has things where so you can get it, I think, with the body actually all, with a finish on it. You know, uh, and then yeah. I don't know if the neck, I don't think the neck is finished, but that's something you would tongue oil lightly anyway, right. or even leave unfinished. And then, uh, of course, by the time you're putting that all together, you pretty much just have their bolt, which is their copy of a strat anyway, and paid just a little bit less than what you'd pay for one that they put together. Right. So, eh. Yeah, I know. It's like, eh, I'm not sure if I want to go there. I tell you that that Tele uh, kit that I built from Grizzly, I looking back on it, I wish I would have not finished that neck. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I put All on you this, need is a belt sander, brother. I know, I know. <laughs> I know all I got to do is just sand it off. I get that. And just, I'm lazy. And every minute I spend standing is one less minute I can play guitar. So. That's true. Yeah, that's why my, the guts of my guitar are still not in it. Yeah. So that's what it is. <laughs> and of course, there are. Maybe what we need to do is go find some – of course, you know, fall is not the time of year for this. But um, come spring when the yard sales are out there, we'll find somebody's like piece of trash, you know, K, (laughs) you know, $50 guitar or something and give them 20 bucks for it and get out a bandsaw. We can always go to Target and get uh, one of those first act (laughs) guitars. Oh, yeah. That's great. (laughs) What do you want to do? Well, I'm going to take the little amp that comes with the guitar and put it in the guitar. <laughs> in the guitar, right. You know, the thing is, too, is that in the other – the flip side of the project guitar is how much money are you willing to put into it? So do you really want to put like $500 worth of parts into a first act guitar? It's true. You know? And I guess if you're looking to resell it, that's a horrible idea. Right. But yeah. if you're looking to just learn – and you get something that's playable in the end. Mm-hmm. I'm not totally opposed to that. That's true. 
I would spend more money upgrading that stupid <laughs> my my uh, baby guitar because pff, you know it's an import, but it's I like it. Yeah, I mean it's all part of it's it's uh you're learning and it's just part of the hobby. I don't have a problem. I guess you know a lot of people and a lot of people on the forum say you know why would you buy an affinity or whatever, put $500 of hardware in it. And then you can never get that back. And so the point is to not get it back. Then what does it matter? Right. The that's point true. is just to have fun then. And as long as it plays well, that's the key though. Whatever, whatever I end up with, I want it to play well because I want to play it. Yeah. You know, it's funny because I think a lot of, uh, you know, the, the kind of the fun for me would be if I were going to do this, which I'm not, but if I were, it would be to find the ultimate value in parts and, and project guitar. So it wouldn't be about like having something that was like awesome and, and equivalent to a $2,000 guitar or something. It would be about how cheap could I go <laughs> in both the, the initial guitar and the parts I'd stick in it to make it pretty competitive and a good playing guitar. Like, could you take get an Affinity and then get some knockoff Artec or GFS or whatever pickups and maybe a different bridge if you're into that or whatever, different neck that you got on eBay for 25 or 30 bucks or something. Right. And make it like, hey, this is actually a good player. And I spent a couple hundred bucks and, you know, I about, bet a, you, about 100 hours. <laughs> yeah. I bet you could do it. I think that would actually be a fun challenge. So, yeah. Uh, you might, I, I think you could do it easily. Um, and, Cheaply, you can get a better product if you started with like a uh, and uh, made in Mexico Stratocaster. Sure, right? Because they already play pretty well. So you'd have to, you know, pickups. You might have to do a bridge change if you wanted a two point bridge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe swap out the nut. The neck should be fine. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. If you go with the Squire Affinity, you might. I think you would have to change out the bridge. Mm-hmm. You'd have to change out the nut. And, um, again, that could be interesting to learn how to do. I mean, I put the nut in that, um, Telecaster that I assembled, but this is different. You're taking a nut out, cleaning it and then sand and actually then filing a nut down. Yeah. This is a different thing, but, uh, you know, you'd have to put pickups in it. Um, you might want to swap out the neck. I don't know how good the necks are in the affinity series. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, mean, I don't remember. I think we played a couple when we were over there looking for something of yours. <laughs> uh, I think I was shopping for that amp. I yeah, we played some stuff. But but you know yeah. that would be an interesting little. Uh, so we need a, a cheap guitar lovers club where we just say, okay, so this month's uh, challenge is you have one hundred and fifty dollars to spend. Build the best guitar you can. <laughs> yeah. Start. Yeah, I, that's that's a brilliant idea. So you start a club where. Um, the entry fee is the purchase of a affinity. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then the challenge each week, month is, or every other month or every six months, whatever the case might be is, you know, you have so many dollars in parts. Everybody has the affinity who can make the best playing affinity with 150 bucks. Right. Best playing, best sounding. Or maybe what you do is you say best playing. Another competition would be best sounding. Yeah. That'd be good. We'll yeah. end up like, you know, in five years we'd be like, you know, budding luthiers. Right, right. Yeah. Of course, then the competition will be fierce because we'll have a whole club's worth, you know. <laughs> be a good place to live for guitar players. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so anyway. Um, wow, I didn't really intend for the whole show to be about uh, putting together guitars. That's okay. Well, here, I got birthdays for a break. Oh, yes, absolutely. So uh, Chuck Berry, October 18th. Steve Lukather, October 21st. So Steve Lukather, Toto, and also like every studio thing in the 80s. <laughs> um, and Leslie West from Mountain on uh, the October 22nd. Cool. So that's what I got. Excellent. I'm putting these together. So every every show, I should have a few. <laughs> nice. I'm going out yeah. looking for all my favorite guys. Yeah. You, you've done more homework before the show than I did. I <laughs> sort of signed on to Skype when we started talking. That's all right, though. That's what guitars are. It's like that's, that's free-flowing, sh- yes. That's what the show has become. So if you would like us to flow in your direction, audience, send us a message, right? Tweet us at SST Show. You could email me, chris at jestercat.com. Uh, and we would love to hear from you, and we would love to uh, get some show ideas. 
Otherwise, you're just going to get what Jesse and I want to talk about each show, <laughs> which is what it's been for the last 27 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think uh, maybe it's about time to sign off here. What do you think, Jesse? Absolutely. All right. Well, don't forget to contact us and keep practicing and just keep picking and grinning. Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure is a production of Jester Cat Studios. You can see more about this and all other Jester Cat shows at JesterCat.com. You can also email the show at SST at JesterCat.com or continue the conversation on Twitter at SST Show. You can follow Robert at R.S. Macy, Jesse at Jester 700, and Chris at C.W. Culp. Thanks to Jesse for playing and recording our intro music. 